I'm here today because we're going to change our backup solution. Now we currently use a QNAP, which is a Linux based box, and uh, it's this one here. As you can see up there, we are sort of failing on one of the drives. Um, these drives are all sort of five years old anyway, and we want to sort of take these out, and our solution to that is replacing them with new Western Digital 3 terabytes, as you saw in a previous video. So what I'm going to do first of all is take one of these drives, put it in my system, back up all of the data that I need to back up, take those drives out, put the new ones in, reconfigure it, and then start the backups again. Hello. We're going to put one of these in this machine, bring this one into play. It's good douche, look at that, absolute animal. Put it inside it. There we have it, okay. I'm going to slide this back in. In here. Um, I hear computers. I mean, what is the deal? That's all I'm saying. I put a three terabyte drive in. What happens? You can see in uh, File Explorer, there's no three terabyte drives. <laughs> so we need to go to Disk Management. So you right click on Computer Management. What disk management here? It should automatically say to us, "This drive has not been initialized. Would you like to initialize it?" Yes, I would. And there we go, unallocated. So we need to now new simple volume. Next on that, we're going to give it a drive letter D. New volume. I'm going to give it a name of um, WD Red Pro. Next, and then finish to that. You should now see that it will, yep, mount itself in Explorer. So it's after formatting, you lose. Uh, sort of a third of a terabyte unfortunately, but what can you do? 2.72 terabytes, nice, and we've got 10 of them. Eight of them are going into the QNAP, and then two are hot spare. This is one of the hot spares. We're gonna back up temporarily to this before we exchange the drives. The question is though, guys, when was the last time you were given melon and palmer ham as a starter for your lunch at work? All right, guys, so as you can see here, we're just finishing the uh, transfer process from student counts to the three terabyte drive as you can see there we go so they've all copied from all of our intake gear groups have copied across okay we'll go to the server room now and it's all these new drives let's do this all right so first things first I'm updating the firmware on the QNAP finder and it's going to update the firmware on the actual box itself and after that we're going to install the drives and then obviously raid 10 them rebooting system System is rebooting. As soon as it's ready, put the new drives in. So that's drive number one. Three terabyte. Boom shaka. Right, we're gonna take these into the office now and we'll swap them over to the new drives and I'll show you put them back in. If you look inside to the back of the uh, QNAP, you can see the SATA connectors where the drives sort of slot into, just like a normal machine. This is a SATA connection for normal SATA drives. Anti-static wristband! Oh, oh no. god, that computer's dead! That drive useless! Not gonna work, is it? <laughs> um the screw head <laughs> The screw head just broke on the uh drive.
boots, 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 I don't want to work here anymore. Going to put the drawers back in now. Let's get cracking. Okay, as you can see, all the drawers are green. They've been registered. They've been initialized or spun up rather, and seen and uh, read. Let's go and configure it now. All right, dudes, we're back in our office. As you can see, the server thinks it's not initialized now, so we're going to go through the process of initializing the QNAP and setting it all up. So the smart installation guide. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, as you can see, so enter the NAS name and administrator's password. Right, so we're going to uh, keep the time it's got. There you go. Um, we've already statically assigned its IP address in those DNS servers, which is fantastic. Next on that. Um, Cross-platform file transfer service. We want, yep, yeah, Windows or SMB, file station. Um, we don't need the photo station, music, download station, iTunes server, or this. Next. Okay, as you can see, it's going to allow us to do the disk configuration now, which is awesome. We've got one, two, eight. All of them have three terabyte drives in them, all Western Digital. So tick them. And this is where we can obviously Grade them. Okay, so now we've uh, selected all the drives. If you click on uh, Learn More here and go ahead and click on RAID 10, which is what we want to do here. Click Save on that. And the capacity it will give us is 11 terabytes. Okay, so we'll go next on that and then I'll see the last page here. We'll click Apply. It says here, would you like to proceed with the disk configuration, single disk? So it says that we need to create um, shared folders on the disk. Okay, let's click confirm on that. Now it gives us a uh, status bar, as you can see there in the center of the screen. All right, it's finished formatting those drives. It says starting service BTD. Back up to disk, perhaps? Nobody knows. All right, then, guys. Let's go to the NAS management here. Oh, swanky, swanky! So what I'm doing now is getting the QNAP to join our domain here. Okay, we've joined this to the domain now. Okay, so users. Let's uh, create ourselves a user. All right, so I've created another user called Administrator. For some strange reason, even though in the video you see me click on all these and select RAID 10 from the list, it hasn't actually RAID 10. So let's go ahead and do it manually. We'll tick them all again, select RAID 10. We're going to click the Migrate button at the bottom. All the data's going to be erased. Yes, we know, because there was nothing like it in the first place. Just fucking do it, yeah? It's a bit of a waiting game again. All right, guys, so we've got 99% on the migration status for the RAID array here. Now, it says it's been running for seven hours, that's a lie. <laughs> it's been running overnight, so this is uh, the next day, and it's been running for over 24 hours now. For a single percent, it would be about 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, that's a 24 terabytes in RAID 10. There we go, the RAID array is now ready. You see the 11 terabytes of usable space. So I'll go ahead and create the folder structure that we wish to sort of um, back up our data to. Coming down here is privilege settings and we've got shared folders. We then create the folders that we wish to use and uh, back up to. So I'm going to go ahead and share a folder. All right, as you can see there, um, Friday, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, and Wednesday backup. So let's go ahead and map those as network drives on the server. I've also given those shares. Uh, full read write access to a uh, local administrator account on the QNAP box. So, so let's go ahead and map the drives. And we're on the last share there, just doing Wednesday, just a bit random. 
and there we go. As you can see on the server, we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday backups. Let's go ahead and run a test Tuesday backup to see if it's working. All right, I'm using a free piece of software called Iperius Backup for this. Uh, I've created a test job, which is uh, source, uh, some exam accounts, and the destination is a Tuesday backup folder. So the Tuesday backups, obviously nothing in there at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and run that now. So run the selected job test. Okay, it'll see, say to us backup has started and began. Backup in progress, it thinks it's done it successfully. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the server. So Tuesday backups, PNAP1, test. Okay, student area exams, and then there we have the eight test accounts. There's the data. Our backups are working successfully. So I've selected the student areas, destination, we're going to add that and tell it where to save to. So I'm going to go to computer and obviously then uh, today will be Tuesday. But let's just start with Monday. So Monday, start with that. Okay. Okay. And then uh, next. And next again. Uh, for the schedule, schedules here, you go to run backup automatically using the following scheduling. Monday, weekly backup. At a time of 1800, so 6 o'clock, add, there you go. So every Monday at 6 o'clock, this backup will now run. And that's it, so finish that. Okay, job name, Monday backup. Monday student backup has been created. I'm going to replicate that now with Tuesday to Friday and in the same, in the same way. Alright, guys, we've got Monday to Friday as a scheduled backup. 6 p.m. every night. Let's go ahead and run Tuesdays now and test that that's working okay. Okay, let's go and have a look in the server room and check the drives are all working together. As you can see, it's starting to copy data across. Right, back into the server room now. Let's go and have a look at the old QNAP. All the drives are flickering away nicely. Look at that, there we are. As you can see, QNAP. So I think it's uh, time to say thank you for watching and um, I'll catch you guys next time. I'm Jake Billing, see ya!